In today's episode of How Long Until Satch Destroys His Mental Health, I am going to be attempting to get to round 50 using nothing but wall weapons. War weapons in Call of Duty Zombies aren't really the best, now don't get me wrong, they aren't bad at all, but for the most part you're only really using war guns early game until you get to the box, or if you're doing high round runs and need something for points. Now obviously this doesn't really apply to any of the more recent zombie games, being Cold War and Vanguard, as nearly everything in those games is capable of getting you to round 50. I'm sure there's some hidden gems on the non tryout games, but if I'm being totally honest, my knowledge of those games is quite poor. In fact, it's actually very poor, and I, you know... I don't want to learn things because I'm lazy. That leaves World at War and the remaining Black Ops games. Straight away, there's no chance in hell I'm attempting this on World at War, Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 because quite frankly, I'm just not that good at the game. I mean, with a bit of practice and time, sure, but yeah, I'm lazy. That leaves us with Black Ops 3 and 4. I feel like the obvious choice here is Black Ops 3, having guns such as the KRM available from the wall, and the option of putting the ridiculously OP Deadwire on it, it's definitely the smart choice. But this is my channel and video, so you already know that there is nothing smart about anything I do, so Black Ops 4 it is. Black Ops 4, however, does bring with it some challenges. Once again, I'm not that good at the game, and Black Ops 4 isn't really a game that I have that much time put into, and there's honestly only three maps on this game that I can say I'm good enough to even try and get to round 50 on. Nine is the first of those, but we just did a video there, so that's out. Blood of the Dead is up next. Now, this map is hard enough when you're using the most optimal loadouts, so that's another no. And lastly, that brings us Tag to Toten. Now, funnily enough, I could count using my hands when it comes to how many times I've played this map, but I did play a shitload of Call of the Dead when I was younger, and they're basically identical. Plus one being tied to Toten, which is infinitely easier. So, here we are. Now before we get into this properly, I did come up with some very basic rules. Firstly, any type of grenade is allowed. I don't hate myself that much. AATs are also allowed, as I don't really think they're that impactful on this game as to what they are on Black Ops 3. Your special weapon is also allowed, but, there is a big but here, it can only be activated when I am completely completely out of ammo in my guns. No using it for the sake of using it, and as I'm going to be constantly buying ammo, it's not going to get that much use anyway. Elixirs are not allowed, and neither are talismans, and finally traps are also not allowed. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the loadout. I started with the Welling. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie, this was a mistake. I was supposed to start with the Strife, but I didn't realize I had the Welling equipped, and I quite frankly just couldn't be bothered to restart. Plus, there's a Strife Warbite in the spawn anyway. Wraith Fire was also along for the ride, I mean it's really the only option for lethals in this game. Path of Sorrows was also our special weapon. Perks pretty much just went for a very simple and straightforward selection. Stamina Up, Quick Revive, Winter's Whale, and then Ethereal Razor. Now, the, there is logic behind this choice, which we'll get to when the time arrives. Early game, this was pretty much just a first room challenge. The Strife is just so powerful, and when you pair it with the Essex, which I know isn't that great, but it does have a nice headshot multiplier, so together, for the early rounds at least, it's a good pairing. In fact, I blasted through the opening 10 rounds like there were nothing with this setup, and I didn't actually end up leaving the spawn room until round 13. Now came the challenge of remembering where everything was, which took me honestly about 15 minutes. So with the power finally turned on, Quick Revive bought, and a new gun being the Mozu, I got to work. Round 14, everything almost came crashing down around me as I ended up getting stuck in a container, but the Wraith Fire was my hero here as it basically saved my life. Now I did end up popping my special here out of panic, but the Wraith Fire had already killed everything, so I don't really think that's cheating, but it is what it is. I will say that the Mozu is actually awful, and was completely at fault for my brush with death, so I got rid of it pretty much immediately for the Auger. The Auger was in fact one of the guns on the wall that made me want to do this challenge on Black Ops 4 in the first place. It's powerful, has a nice ammo count, and is overall a very fun gun to use. There are also a few other guns that I was tempted to pick, the Trebuchet Shotgun, as it becomes a literal grenade launcher when Packer punched, the Titan, an LMG with good damage and all the ammo in the world you could care for, and finally the Koshka Sniper. 
A weird choice, I know, but that gun puts out so much damage that if you can hit your shots, it's almost guaranteed to get you to a high round. But ultimately, I ended up sticking with the Strife and the Auger. I decided to stick around on the ship for a few rounds, which is a bit of a risky decision, but it was all in the hopes that the Golden Packer Punch would become active and I could get that cheap tier 4 upgrade. Obviously, that didn't happen, and on round 16, I went and got a tier 1 upgrade for the Auger. On round 18, I finally went and bought the Bowie Knife and our final perk of the game, Ethereal Ring. Razor. Now, my plan for this was to have a nice, powerful melee, considering I was only allowed to use war weapons, and well, the Bowie knife is exactly that. The main issue with that is, was the fact that I bought them on round 18. Even with the Thero Razor, the Bowie knife starts to lose its edge at that round. The lunge attack was still capable of killing enemies in one hit, but the offhand attack wasn't, and by round 20, it really wasn't worth using. And at this point, I was also wishing that I had opted for a different perk to Ethereal Razor. Something like Mule Kick for the extra gun, and then ammo or bandolier bandit just for that straight up extra ammo but it was too late for any of that speaking of round 20 this was when i decided to go back to spawn where i would continue to play the rest of the game however it wasn't before long when i was back on the ship as the golden pack punch finally became available once again on round 23 so i headed over and got my guns upgraded to their maximum potential speaking of the golden pack punch i still think this is one of the coolest <laughs> excuse the pun additions to any map we've ever had and unfortunately Unfortunately, also something that we'll probably never see again because I don't think there's any reason to bring back the Golden pack punch as hopefully we don't ever have to do three, four, five pack punches with our guns at the maximum strength ever again. Please, try out for the love of God. One pack punch and it's done. Please, I'm begging you. With my newly upgraded guns, I began flying through these rounds and before I knew it, I was closing in on round 30. It was also around this time that I used Path of Sorrows for the first legitimate time as I was getting a little cocky, I won't lie, a little bit cocky and careless with my ammo. Finally, we broke into the 30s. The Strife was surprisingly still holding its own very well at this round and was also my main gun. I mean, mainly due to the fact that the ammo was quite literally within touching distance, which me and my grandfather status aim very much needed. The Auger at this round was also still making light work of popping heads, although it was mainly being used sporadically, and by that I mean when panic stations hit and I thought I was going to die. However, the Auger's time in the spotlight was was coming to an end as we approached round 40. Both of my guns at this point were pretty weak. I couldn't afford to get rid of the strife due to the availability of ammo, which meant it was time to say goodbye to the auger as I picked up the trebuchet shotgun. As aforementioned, this turns into a grenade launcher when packer punched, and with its immense damage, it was pretty much a no-brainer that it was what I needed for these final 10 rounds. Uh, there was one big problem with the trebuchet though, and that was the explosive yield. Like, literally the main thing about this gun was the main issue I was having with this gun. Now, you see, if I had PhD, this would never be an issue because, you know, I wouldn't be able to blow myself up. But I didn't, and I won't lie, there, there was a few times where it almost got me down, but thankfully, I didn't actually kill myself with the gun at all, which I'm honestly very surprised about. But talking of taking it down, I do actually end up taking my first down of the game on round 45. Five rounds away from this being a flawless round 50, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Now, I won't lie, it was panic stations here once again, as it was time for me to go and rebuy some perks, and I was fully convinced that I'd be taking a second down as I tried to recover my perks, but thankfully it never came and I was able to recover both of my lost perks at ease. And it was finally time to get through these final few rounds. Round 47 was our final dog round of the game before 50, giving me full ammo in the trebuchet and a spark of hope that this could finally be a victory for me. Round 48 was a slow and tedious round with a few close calls here and there, but for the most part I made it out unscathed. Then it was time for the finale, the last round, round 49. Once again, it was slow, tedious, and a pain in the ass of a round. Two and a half hours this had taken me, and I was not allowed to let some pixels beat me. And finally, 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 we make it into round 50 with the Strife getting the killing blow. It's not very often I actually beat a challenge, but my god, this one felt good. I don't think I've ever used war guns, like, only on the channel or, like, any challenges based around war guns, but to have our first video based around war guns be a victory, maybe maybe it's an omen. Maybe it's a good omen. Is that a thing? Is, is omens only for bad things, or can they be for good things? Do you know what? It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked right at the end of the video. Yeah. <laughs> 
God, my brain is small. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please do leave a like and a sub if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what other challenges you want to see. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.